let's look at a couple examples involving conditional probability. So let's suppose we have the following information about tomorrow. The event D is going to be I die tomorrow. And the event E is there's a giant earthquake in Portland. So uh, my probability of survival, I'm going to put at 1 in 1 million, which is probably pretty optimistic. I didn't check an actuarial life table, though, so let's just go with it. Let's say the probability of a giant earthquake tomorrow is 1 in 50,000 or 2 in 100,000. Again, just a number I'm making up. So let's also pretend the probability that I die if there's a giant earthquake tomorrow jumps up all the way to 0.16. Um, again, just something I'm making up, but you probably guessed that if there's, a, if there's a giant earthquake tomorrow, the probability I die is going through the roof, at least relatively speaking. So... Then we can ask this question, what's the probability there's a giant earthquake tomorrow and I die, which would be probability of E and D. So before, what we did when we find a probability like this is we just multiply the probabilities of E and D separately, which are these two. But that doesn't work in this case because those two are not independent. So what we do instead is we have to do the probability of the earthquake times the probability of the euro symbol times the probability I die if there's an earthquake. So I need to take that into account. So the calculation, though, is pretty straightforward because I have both of them in here. I just do this times this, and I get this number, 3.2 times 10 to the minus 6th, which if we format that as a decimal number, 0. 0.0000032 or something, fairly fairly small number. Um, not a super useful calculation, but if you had a math problem like that, that is how you do it. But let's look at a more realistic scenario, one I have a little bit of personal experience with. So there's a disease called tuberculosis. You might know about it, you might not have, but there's a test for it. So basically everyone can either have tuberculosis, yes or no, and they can test positive for it, yes or no. Now, the incidence of tuberculosis in the US is very low. I looked this up online. It's 2.8 per 100,000 people. So the test for tuberculosis is very good um, at identifying who has it. So there's about a 99.5% chance that if you have tuberculosis, the test will show up positive. So that means there's a few people each year who are going to have tuberculosis, but the test is an error. It's going to tell them they don't have it, which is obviously a very bad thing because tuberculosis is a contagious disease that um, needs to be treated. I don't know. It's a it's curable, um, but it's not a not a simple process, if I recall. So on the subject of errors, there's also the thing where <coughs> excuse me. Um, most people who don't have tuberculosis will test negative for it, but a small percentage of the population actually is going to test positive without having the disease. So I made that number up, uh, estimated based on some numbers I found online, but a little under 2.5% of the population would test positive without having it. That's known as a false positive. If you go into healthcare, like nursing, uh, tuberculosis tests are required for employment most places. They have to make sure you don't have it and can't spread it to patients, especially those with compromised immune systems. So then we add total. So this says a total of 2.5% of people will test positive tuberculosis. 97.5% will not um, have tuberculosis. Here's the total, total and don't have. So the numbers are kind of weird here, but let Excel deal with the decimals. What we want to do is just answer this question. What is the probability you have tuberculosis if you test positive? Normally, getting a, te a positive test result is a little scary, a little worrying. Um, but with all the false positives out there, you a little bit of um, conditional probability can go a long way. So we had this formula before. Probability of A and B is probability of A times probability of B given A. Now, what we can do is we can rearrange this formula, use some algebra. Now, keep in mind, this whole thing on the left side is one number. Probability of A is one number. Probability of B given A is one number. So even though it looks like a mess, like a bunch of different symbols, it's really just one unit algebraically. So basically, we just divide both sides of the equation by the probability of B given A. 
and we can come up with probability of A and B divided by probability of B. I'm sorry, that's not what I want to do. I want to divide both sides by the probability of A. Right, divide both sides by the probability of A, and we get this equation. So what is the probability you have TB if you test positive? So in notation, probability of TB if a positive test, we can get at with this formula. We just take the probability of both of them, A and B, so that's TB and the positive test, and we divide it by the total for that condition variable. In this case, we divide it by the total for the positive test. If you think about this condition, if you test positive, that means you're limiting yourself to the positive test row right here. So you take this cell for both, yes and yes, divide it by the total for that condition, and you get 0 0.01011, so less um, about a tenth of a percent. So if you test positive for tuberculosis, which I have twice, I might add, um, I wasn't too worried about it because the probability of a false positive is so much greater than the probability I have the disease. Uh, of course, they did verify that with a chest x-ray, so don't worry, you're not going to catch it with me. The chest x-ray was more diagnostically sound, but it subjected me to a little bit of radiation. And before you ask, yes, I did get superpowers, but no, I can't demonstrate them. They are very destructive.